Welcome to another exciting Bible study with Reverend Dr. James A. Duncan, pastor of Shiloh Baptist Church. Faith study in the Word is designed to keep you fired up about your walk with the Lord. Fired up about our faith study in the Word with Pastor Duncan, author, teacher, and long-term educator with a burning desire to see every believer live a full life of faith in the redeeming power of God. This can only happen when we develop a hunger and thirst for studying the Word, God's Word. Thanks for joining us in tonight's study. We made it 2021. 2020, out of here. This is Pastor Duncans, and welcome to the first Bible study of 2021. Yay! You know, I'm playing around. 2020 was tough, but you know what? God was still good. Can I get an amen? God was good to us through 2020. Not only did we make it, God was doing something. Maybe we don't know what he was doing yet. But I want to finish up a study and get into a, before I shift into a new direction. We were looking at how the isolation of 2020 with, you know, the COVID-19 and how loneliness was exacerbated. We were looking at how people who were discouraged and depressed found themselves in this position of being more discouraged and more depressed. And we were looking at the causes, and we came through and looked at several causes of discouragement and depression. I need you to go look at those. But today, I want to take you on a journey as I close out this series on depression and discouragement to teach you about the last level of attack for the enemy. It's, it's the first thing that hits us, but it's almost like the last level of attack, and that is loneliness. That's what I'm going to deal with. How to Cure Loneliness. This is uh, our last installment on how to deal with discouragement and depression. And I'm going to take you to a surprising passage of scripture. Go with me to 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. When you get there, say amen. You're going to be not shocked, but you're going to see that all of us are susceptible to Loneliness. I'm reading from 2 Timothy. Of course, you know that was written by the Apostle Paul. I'm starting at verse 9. Do your best to come to me as soon as you can. Because Demas, who loved this world, left me when he went to Thessalonica. Crescens went to Galatia. And Titus went to Dalmatia. Luke is the only one still with me. And get Mark and bring him with you when you come, because he can help me in my work here. I sent Tychicus to Ephesus when I was in Troas. I left my coat there with Carpus. So when you come, bring it to me along with my books, particularly the ones written on parchment. Let's stop there. That passage of scripture Believe it or not, is the Apostle Paul. And that first line tells us something about Paul. As he was on, this is his last days. This is before he was martyred. This is before he was, he was about to leave and he knew he was about to leave. And Paul said something as he was writing this second letter to Timothy. He said to him, do your best to come to me as soon as you can. Some verses say, come quickly. When you read the passage in its entirety, you'll find out Paul was lonely. Paul was dealing with a spirit that hits us all. He was just not alone. He was lonely. There's a difference between being alone and being, I'm going to help you out, being in loneliness. I want you to know Paul was or found himself in what we call a situation of loneliness, a spirit of that comes on us. We're going to look at this. Do you know psychology today say, says loneliness can actually kill us? What does it mean? Loneliness can speed up some of the most negative processes to our body. It can send us into a state of grief. It can send us into depression, the spirit of loneliness. Loneliness can come in and it can allow us to get physical illnesses, high blood pressure, arthritis, 
uh, Alzheimer's disease, all that comes from that spirit of loneliness. And yet, I want you to know that God still works because we don't want loneliness to turn into depression. I want to help somebody. Even though you are lonely, you're never alone. Come on, where the church folk at that understand a lot of the hymn writers that were writing during tumultuous times for the church, they wrote hymns that let us know we have a God who promised never to leave us alone. Uh, what, is, what is it? There's a song. I, I heard the, I saw the lightning flash and I heard the thunder roll. Um, Sin breakers tried to come and dash my soul, but I heard the voice of my Savior telling me to fight on. No, never alone. Never, never will I leave you alone. No, never alone. Never, never alone. When we have God on our side, somebody needs to know, God is a God who will never leave you nor forsake you. God is a God who is with you. Don't let the spirit of loneliness, which is another, another dark Demonic spirit trying to invade you because you're alone. There's a difference between being alone and being lonely. We need to understand about that difference. So that's what we're going to teach about today. One of the things I want you to see is cause number three for depression. We're going to look at how God gives us a cure for loneliness. But I want somebody. I want a companion. I need somebody. Yeah, but don't let that spirit take you to a place of depression. Listen to me. Don't let that spirit get you down that you don't understand that there's a God who can cure and fix anything going on in your life. Let's take a look at it. So remember I said, this is Bible study, so I want you to get a pen and paper. Somebody said, why is he putting all the scriptures up there? Why doesn't he just teach it? Because I want you to learn something. I know it's old and outdated, but I still want you to grab that scripture so you can write it down. And when you start reading, there's going to be an anointing of God that flows to you as you write it down. I could say write it down, but sometimes I go too fast. So I want you to stay with me. Loneliness, watch this. Here's what it appears to be. Seeming to be neglected. Different than being alone. Feeling alone in a struggle with no support or companionship. There's a difference. Being alone can be healthy. Being alone can be renewing, refreshing. Being alone can be something that God is getting ready to bless us with. But being lonely is something totally different. So what we're going to talk about is when you feel like you're neglected, that's one of the things that messes up loneliness. You feel like you're neglected. Not only do you feel like you're neglected, you feel like or you don't have any support with whatever situation you're dealing with. And when you don't have any support, you find yourself dealing with some darkness you cannot handle on your own. And we don't have companionship. Now, this is very important that we understand. This study on depression, I have been very clear. We never throw in the tap. God is first. He is our only infallible source. So we are not throwing up our hands. We're going to show you God still works in dark times in our life. We're going to show you that God is the one still working. Not only that, we'll look at those who are depressed and scourged in the Bible. That's what I said. There are people, your heroes, who went through discouragement and who are depressed in the Bible, and God still brought them through. God's going to bring you through. I'm speaking to you right now. Don't you dare think that what you're going through is going to get you down when there is a God who wants to pull you through, and God is able. Say that with me right now, maybe through some tears. And I am not downplaying your situation. I'm not downplaying your loneliness. I'm just sharing with you that there is a God who many, many, many of us can testify. He has been there. He's been our rock. He's been our source of comfort whenever we found ourselves lonely. We find out we will see the cause of depression to help us identify and avoid it. So we're going to look at why the Bible character was depressed so that we can avoid it ourselves. What is the cure for loneliness? First, the definition of loneliness. I showed you what loneliness does, what the spirit does. Now let me show you what the actual definition is. Loneliness is a state of mind. Stop. I will. Any emotional state you can get into, you can also get out of. 
Sometimes when we're depressed, when loneliness leads to that place of depression where we feel like we have no energy, we feel like we can't move another step, we feel like, you know, we, there's no answer, there's no way out. A person who is depressed, especially clinical depression, I talked about all that in the earlier installments of this lesson, we found out that depression, and we found out saints can be depressed, I, I gave you that as... I gave you the number, one out of seven adults. You don't think any of those are Christian? Yes, we are. So how do I deal with it? I understand the place where all our victories come from, right? Our mind. The devil attacks your mind. You got to cast down imagination. You don't believe me? Think about what depression does to you. It tells you to, when you get into a dark place, when you feel like you're lonely, you build that up in your mind. I don't have anybody. Why other people have somebody? Seems like nobody wants me. You feel neglected. It seems like there's no way out. I'm tired. When you say I'm tired, that's a trick of the enemy to pull you into a place that you can't handle. Yeah, you're tired. All of us get tired. But there's a way that God can renew us and lift us back up. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5, casting down imaginations and everything, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Watch this. So if something comes in my mind that tells me to do something that's against the goodness of my life and against the knowledge of God, I am supposed to cast that spirit down before it happens. It's brought on an emotion. There it is again. State of mind and emotions. Feelings. Don't you let your feelings kill you. That's why God has given us praise. God has given us a way we can get through this. Brought on by feelings of separation from other human beings. Very important to note. God made us to have social connections. God made us social creatures. God said it's not good for man to be alone. I'm not downplaying that. I'm saying don't let loneliness come in. Not being alone. Don't let loneliness, that spirit that leads you to a dark place and takes you from realizing your victory. You are victorious in God. You got a Savior that walks with you. Reminds me of another old school song. I go to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses. And the joy I find, he says, he walks with me, he talks with me, he tells me I am his own. And the joy we feel while we tarry there, none other has ever known. All I'm saying is there's a joy that's walking with God that can eradicate, that can destroy, that can supernaturally place you to a place where loneliness cannot get you. Not only that, the Hebrew word translated desolate or lonely in the Old Testament means one alone only, one who is solitary, forsaken, and wretched. Look at the definition of the word. It says, I feel alone by myself. I feel solitary. That's not bad. Forsaken and wretched. That's what loneliness does. Takes you to a place where you feel wretched. I'm not worthy. Stop it. And understand what God said in his word about the spirit of loneliness. Why are we concerned about this? Because it's so important that we not allow ourselves to get caught up in this spirit. First of all, God said in Genesis 2, 18, look at that. Then the Lord said, it is not good that man shall be alone. I will make him a helper. One, I like this word, that is fit for him. God said it's not good for you to be alone. He'll make a helper. So God is the one who said we need someone around us. We need some companionship around us. God is the one who told us that it's not good for man to be alone so that he made us a help me. Adam had a help me because God said, God said. So don't quit there. So I'm not telling you to sit there like loneliness doesn't affect you. We're dealing with this because none of us should let the spirit of loneliness wipe out our connection to God and to others, even when it comes to companionship. Watch the power of companionship. God said companionship is powerful. Watch this. Promotes higher quality life. When you have a companion, iron sharpens iron, and one man sharpens another. Proverbs 27, 17. So companionship is important because iron, so when I get to a place that I can't do something, 
or I need a direction for something, or I need a role model, or I need someone I can pattern my life after, and then maybe there's an area I know that my friend doesn't know, they can pattern their life after me. Companionship. Nobody can function from a seat of all-knowing. It will lead you directly to loneliness. So you know, understand there is a power in companionship. That's why we're talking about this. Companionship provides us with an unconditional ally. That's very important. Unconditional. A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born of adversity. I love that. Everybody who is your is wants to be a companion with you, if they're not loving you unconditionally, they're not loving you in the biblical sense of companionship. Compan come on, we all got flaws. As soon as you can only see mine and not see yours, you're not a great companion. As a matter of fact, all of us need to realize there are no perfect people, but if we are to be in a long-term or supportive companionship relationship, please stop pointing out my faults so I will stop pointing out your faults and we can stand together not holding grudges, not saying, I knew you were going to do that. See, that's what destroys companionship. What God said is, you, if you have a real companion, they know stuff about you whoop, that nobody else knows and you don't want nobody to know. And we function through that unconditional relationship like God, what he knows about all of us today. You know, we can act spiritual in front of other folks, but God knows all about us. Not only does it do that, companionship provides us with, watch this, uh, provides us with help when we need it. Ecclesiastes 4 and 9, two are better than one because they get a good reward for their toil. That's self-explanatory. If you can find someone to help, you have a better chance of getting a job done than doing it by yourself. And companionship provides us with love. You know, I don't want to stay here, but this is where the enemy takes us because when, when, when the Bible talks about love, again, it's talking about uh, agape, agape. It's talking about a love that loves us in all states of our lives. It, it's a love that loves us with the love of God. It's unconditional, but it's also a love that is related. It's a love that says, uh, I understand you were made for me and I was made for you. But God tells us that if we can have this love for others, not just those who are we're trying to be a mate with, because you know there's all the definitions, the Greek definitions of love. We're not talking about eros or erotica love. Uh, we're talking about phileo or brotherly love. Because uh, even if you want to get to eros or erotic love, you still have to have some phileo, some friendship love within that erotic love. So when God says love, he's covering a multitude. Look what it just says. Above all, keep loving one another earnestly since love covers a multitude of sins. Wow. You really find out who loves you and if you love them, if they will help, if they will really, really, really stop looking underneath the covers or looking for bad things to happen. Love will cover a multitude of faults and mistakes and sins. So there's a power in companionship. And then there's a power in fellowship. Understand the difference. So important. When people get lonely, the devil tells them, you got to have companionship. you got to have companionship. Nothing wrong with that. God is the one that says there's power in companionship. But there's also power in fellowship that can thwart off, that can help you make it while you're dealing with trying to find companionship. Now watch this. And if you are trying to find them, you can be in a, a relationship with someone and still be lonely because you don't have those principles of companionship. Did you get that? You can be in a relationship with someone and your fellowship can keep you sane because your companionship at home is driving you crazy. So don't think that it's a, 
The, the reality is, the word of God says, fight the spirit of loneliness by understanding who God is, but also know, I don't put all my faith in companionship. I also need to know that in fellowshipping, I'm meeting an area God said that would keep me strong. We can't function without each other. Watch this. So how do I fight loneliness, Pastor? I make sure, yes, I, have, I look for a companion, but I don't throw out the rest of my life because I don't have one yet. I make sure I still know how to love and fellowship with other people. Look what the Bible says. John, 1 John 4, 7 through 10. I'm not going to read all of it for essence of time, but it says there, it is the true test of whether or not you have knowledge of God. You know the verse, how can you say you love your brother? Those who don't love his brother does not really know God. If you don't love each other, you don't know God. In essence is what it's saying. When I can't love you right, I don't know God. Now, wait a minute. So at the bottom of all of this, while you're sitting there saying, I'm so lonely and the devil's pulling us down. But the reality is the only thing that keeps me sane is my knowledge of God. Why? Do you know if I can keep my knowledge of God? It won't make a difference what you do to me. It won't make a difference what I'm going through. It, I, it'll still be hard. I'm human. But I will have something to bounce back on because of the fellowship. So true fellowship, if I can love other people, shows that I know God. And when I know God, I'm blessed. Ecclesiastes again. True fellowship gives us access to the beauty of fellowship. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12 I'm not going to read all that. That's, I started reading it, you know, uh, two are better than one because they have heat. Two are better than one because they, they have help. Two are, uh, a threefold cord cannot soon be broken. Everything in Ecclesiastes 4 through 9 tells us how two people, watch this, but the scripture says a threefold cord because it's two people and Christ in the middle of this that can't be broken. We're still talking about fellowship. Did you know, in case no one's ever told you, you can't really have fellowship with me if you don't have fellowship with God first because somewhere along the line there needs to be some guidelines for our fellowship. Come on, because you're going to get angry at me. You're going to get peeved at me. I'm going to get peeved at you. But the Bible tells us forgive and to make up and don't get bitter. So if I don't know what the Bible said, no wonder you can't get along with people. No wonder it's a book you haven't talked to. Someone said, I thought you were talking about loneliness, Pastor. I am. And I'm telling you one of the cures for loneliness is you have to first understand the power of fellowship. Because fellowship can stop you from jumping into that trap called loneliness. That darkness because I'm having too much fun loving other people. Watch this. The power of fellowship. Fellowship brings us into God's favor. Acts 2, 44, 47. Write it down. I'm helping somebody lonely. Power of fellowship. That was a powerful text. Jesus had left. And now all of a sudden the church came together and it said they gave, they had all things in common. Uh, they sat down at the apostles. They, they were breaking the bread from house to house. And they sat down with the apostles. And they loved one another. And they gave of that which they had. But here's the verse you need to understand. It said they had favor with God. Wow. And God added to the church daily such as should be saved. Here's what God said. Favorship is so powerful, you won't have time for loneliness, the dark part of it, because you'll be too busy feasting on your work and your love and your fellowship with God. Be honest. It's when I fellowship and love other people that a blessing comes in my life. Many of us, and I've talked about it many, many times, when God said it's better to give than to receive, we don't realize when I give, I turn on a certain spiritual part of my, my God-given spirit, the part that relates to God. I turn that on, and all of a sudden, there's some divine power in me because I gave. Because you need to know this selfish flesh does not want to give to anybody. Come on, you know what I know. It takes a special spirit to give. I know people that have said to themselves they were going to give a certain thing, and then they said, well, I'm going to give a little less, but they were willing to spend a whole lot on themselves. And what we don't realize is when we tap into God, it's by us giving. And more power came to the church when they understood, I need to fellowship earnestly with other people. So let's go into this. I read you the text. Let me give you the background. So we understood 
there's a power in fellowship, there's a power in um, companionship. Uh, I, I did those two so you won't sit around and think all of this is talking about finding you a mate. It's not what this is about. This is about fighting off a spirit that's trying to kill you. And, and I would tell you one of the things that's stopping you is you need to learn how to fellowship better. The Bible said he who uh, wants friends must first show themselves friendly. I'm saying some of us are in a position where we're never going to find companionship because we don't know how to fellowship because we don't really know God. Let's look at Paul. That doesn't hit Paul. What this is talking about is that test of friendship. Paul met Timothy. This is the second letter to Timothy. Timothy was Paul's lifelong protege. He met him in Acts chapter 16, his second missionary journey. He had gone there earlier, him and Barnabas, on the first missionary journey and met his grandmother Eunice and his mother Lois. And Timothy's father was a Greek, but he got converted. And the Bible tells us it was Eunice and Lois that converted Timothy. Do you realize preaching around your children, around those, living and walking the light, even though it looks like it's doing no good, it is actually igniting your, a person with their destiny that they have with God. Oh, I don't have time. We, can, we have a destiny from God, but some of us don't walk in that destiny. So can I walk in another destiny? I'm going to tell you yes, and I'm going to tell you I got to preach that because some of us don't understand why our lives never fully blossom. Oh, I hate saying that and leaving you hanging. But the reality is, part of it is because we never walked into our destiny. And maybe there's a chain reaction from the generations that somebody in my house should have talked and lived and demonstrated Christ. I'm not trying to blame somebody, but understand the power that happened with Timothy. When Paul got back for his second missionary journey, the Bible tells us he was... Um, he, he met Timothy, and Timothy left and started working with Paul. Paul guided Timothy as a mentor. Then he took Timothy on with him, and Timothy grew and learned, even with all of his shyness. You know, the Bible tells us that Tim, Timothy was timid, and that's why Paul told him to stir up the gift. Sometimes when you're timid, you need to remember that it's not the you that used to be the you that you are now. This especially in a new year. You're a new you. And you need to stir up that and start living it, and you may walk into the destiny God gave you. So here's Paul. Here's Timothy. They're working together. They're doing all this work together. Paul's in a Roman jail. And the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 16, verse 21, how we know that Paul's relationship with Timothy went from being a mentor, being a co-worker, to being a colleague in that um, 16th chapter, it tells us that Paul says, send for Timothy. Uh, he's a worker. He, we need to have him here. Uh, in, in effect, it says, uh, send for my colleague, Timothy. That's what it boils down to. So Paul had a love for Timothy, a paternal love for Timothy. You can read through all the letters, and especially in this uh, second chapter, second chapter of Timothy, he was about to leave. So first he was challenging and teaching Timothy what he needed to do. And then lastly, he was pouring into Timothy so Timothy could minister. And after getting to all of that, when Paul said, wow, I reached it, we get to that ninth verse and we find him say, please come as soon as you can. Listen to the loneliness. Demas left me. If you know anything about Demas, Demas was a worker with Paul. Timothy knew that. So Demas left, and that made it more painful because he had a relationship with Paul and walked out on him. And then he said, he left me for the good things of this life. We said he went to the world and went to Thessalonica. Crescent has gone to Galatia, Titus to Dalmatia. So there were people who he had in his circle but Paul was by himself now in this jail. He wasn't just alone. I don't care what anybody tells you about 2020. Don't let anybody tell you that they're walking on clouds all the time. Everything's joy, 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 joy down in my heart. No, there are days when I fight. There are days when I look at the demand God has from me, for me, the demand God expects of me, and the work he has for me, 
that I find out it is overbearing unless I yield to God to help me. None of us can do the work God wants us to do without God directing us through the work. But here's what you know. You're more than a conqueror with God on your side. But there are moments, and Christians don't like to see it, where in the reality of it is we live in this fantasy world, uh, you know, of fake news and and all this stuff telling everybody, uh, I always walk around. You should be able to beat that. Don't ever, when someone finds you in a bad situation and they start walking up to you, giving you all kind of scriptures, wait a minute, that were not guided by the Holy Spirit. There are some times when God will send someone and there'll be an affirmation in your spirit. Other people are trying to put off their superficial holiness on you, making you think this is what they would do in that situation when they don't know what they would do in that situation because they're not in that situation. So sometimes it's better for you to sit down and listen before you start speaking, telling everybody what you would do. I would just pray through. Okay, I might have to pray through, but don't act like I'm subpar on another level from you. And sometimes I just need you to cry with me. You want to talk about fellowship? Sometimes just sit down and be quiet with me. Sometimes just allow me to work through my situation. So God can bless me. I'm sorry, I wasn't supposed to go there. He said, and Luke is the only one left with me. Bring Mark with you when you come for I need him. I'm going to finish this. Lessons from this text. What's the first lesson we learned? Even spiritually strong can become depressed when they're alone. Paul said, pa Paul wrote two-thirds of the New Testament walked with God, heard the voice of God, constantly did miracles, his very shadow, healed, all of that. But he got lonely. Don't fool yourself. Fight through that spirit. He got lonely. All of us can find ourselves where the enemy will start speaking to our mind and try to destroy that which God gave us. The second lesson from this test. You must be aware of the, path, the fact that people may forsake you. I know they love you. I know you love them. I know they're your heart. I know you put all your mind on them. But when you sit around crying days and nights about somebody who has already forsook you, you're just inviting other spirits. I ask you to rationally think about something. The Bible says, uh, well, let's look at the old the old proverb first. Um, if you have uh, if you have somebody that really loves you, I, I think it's talking about a bird. And if they really love you, open the cage, let them go. If they come back, they love you. If they don't, they didn't. All I'm saying is, when you get to the point that that person is the only way, what was I thinking? I can't survive without them. I need them, and you build up this false. You, you forgot. How horrible that person was to you. You forgot about them day, those days when they did not support you, even when they were with you. And so what happens to us is we get to this false place and say, why? People are sinful. People will forsake you. The best friends have been departed by words that cut and left wounds. So don't let that drive you to a place of loneliness, you got to reboot, good old-fashioned computer term, and start fellowshipping again. Reconciliation is needed to fight loneliness. Um, the Apostle Paul is letting us know in this in the text. Can I read the verse? He says, um, "When I was in Troas, I left my coat there as Carpus." Um, to get Mark, I'm sorry. In verse 11, he said, get Mark and bring him with you when you come because he can help me in my work here. Ooh, remember the fallout Paul and Mark had? But when you get to a place that loneliness is pressuring on you, I said it earlier, sometimes that pressure will subside if you forgive and you want to reconcile. God can put a new spirit in your heart that will bless you. Think about something right now. I, I, I ask you, think about right now somebody who did you wrong, whatever they did, 
and you're fighting because of this pandemic, you're isolated and it's getting worse, before you take a, take a dive off the deep end, think about who can I forgive and love? <laughs> and watch God. Watch God respond. Another lesson. Remembering friends help when you are lonely. There are some friends that will help you. Luke stayed with me. See, I found this out when I, when I first started pastoring. I remember I was in maybe my third or fourth year. And I thank God that, you know, a lot of young pastors don't have the mentors that we had in our generations. A lot of older pastors would speak words of wisdom into you. And I remember when my... Uh, I was really going through, like the deacon board was against me. I had about seven deacons. And I remember calling up my friend and I said, to one of my mentors, I said, man, I can't get a vision done. Every time I try to do something, they shoot it down. He said, I said, well, he said, what's going on? He said, well, I said, well, look, man, I, I got seven deacons and, you know, three of them love me. Those other four always got something wrong to say, always messing up, always trying to shoot down stuff. He said, well, look, he said, right now it looks like to me you're spending time on the wrong ones. Quit worrying about the four that are against you and nurture the three that are for you or get your strength from the three that are for you. It may not seem like it, but that turned my ministry around because I found out something. Why let those naysayers, those negative people, steal all of my thoughts and all of my time when I got folk that are ready to march toward division? That's what we're saying here. Remember, you have some friends that will help you during that time. First, remember your real friend, right? Proverbs 18.24. A man that hath friends must show himself friendly, and there is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. We're still talking about the lessons. So how I understand friendship and understand the power of friendship is I must first remember my real friend is Jesus, the friend that sticks closer than a brother. Then I don't have to worry about trying to love someone else. When you get to the point that everybody else is forsaken you, I dare you to think about the friend who never left. As a matter of fact, who died for you, who gave his life for you. Psalm 16, you make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures evermore. When I can think about God, write down Psalm 16 and 11. It says, in his presence there is fullness of joy. Can I stop there and say that again while this process is in your brain? In his presence. Get out of the presence of that lonely spirit. Get in God's presence. And get some full joy from talking with your Savior. The real joy comes from you not allowing. Remember I said it's a state of your mind? You know, you know I'm telling the truth. When you're sitting there now, the enemy has to get in your mind and put all those negative thoughts, things that may never happen, he throws in your mind so you can't be successful. Exodus 33, 14. And he said, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. The story is Moses said, I'm not going any further unless you go with me. And he kept fighting back and forth. Uh, God said, I'll send, no, 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 God, I'm not going unless you go. That is such a powerful point. Sometimes you, how you take God with you is leave the negative thought, cross over into the word, and allow God's word to be what you feast on for the next few days. Watch that spirit of loneliness run from you. Matthew 28, 20. Teaching them to observe all that I commanded to, and behold, I'm with you always to the end of the world. I love what God said. We like to focus on God said, behold, I'm with you always. But look what he says. It's as you are fully fulfilling the great commandment, uh, teaching people, you know, building disciples. So throw you, if you're lonely, please call this child that. I got, I got some work for you. Throw yourself into the work of the church, and you will no longer be lonely because you'll be calling, you'll be touching, and you will be touched. Did you hear me? You'll be touching, and you'll be touched because of the work of God. Keep a strong relationship with other believers. Follow God's rules of Christian love. Tough one. I'm going to let you write those down. I'm talking about them because I'm about to close. Here we are. I'm about to close. How do I cure loneliness? Have a strong relationship with other believers. There's that fellowship. Find out some believers you, you, you uphold the relationship. You keep it going. Follow God's rules of Christian love. Though I speak with tongues of men and angels and have not love, I am nothing. I am sounding brass and a tinkling symbol. God said, don't love just in word, but in deed. 
How can I see a brother in need and tell them go be warm, go be full, give them all kinds of scriptures, but won't give them $5 out of my pocket? God said, real Christian love, the rules of Christian love, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, uh, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, love thy neighbor as thyself. So you put everybody ahead of you and God will make sure you're picked up. You hear, you hear what I'm saying? You're sitting there being dominated by darkness when God is saying, I surrounded you with a cushion of love, a cure that will bless you through this. Oh, I'm sorry, that's Matthew 22, 37 to 40. Uh, that's uh, follow God's relationships. That's what that's talking about. Love others. Esteeming each other is more than ourselves. Philippians 2, 1 and 8. You really want to get a cure? Think about, I was out, no, I was driving. I was actually driving. I was thinking about going home and working out. And I said, I'm tired and I had a pain in my leg. This is, look what happened. I'm riding down the road and I see a man on crutches with only one leg and his leg was cut off up to his knee. And he was walking along, looked like he was humming. God said, okay, you got a pain in your leg. Here's a man with no leg, still enjoying life. I'm telling you, guys, you need to understand, if you can esteem other people, think about other people's needs, it'll take you from that spirit of loneliness. When you get done with this Bible study, think of somebody you can fulfill. It'll break that loneliness and get that lonely spirit off your mind. God calls us, here, to, here are the areas, minister to the weak, to the suffering, to the sick, to the age, to the alone, and the hurting. I'm going to leave that up in case you write those scriptures down. Here's the bottom line of this text. Paul goes on and says, Alexander, the metal worker, verse 14, did many horrible things against me. The Lord will also punish him for what he did. You also should be careful that he does not hurt you because he fought strongly against our teaching. See the what? See the shift? Paul was lonely, and even though he was thinking about himself trying to get Timothy there, all of a sudden a thought hit him. Timothy, because he had Timothy off in Ephesus doing, doing assignment. He said, Timothy, this is what Alexander, watch out. So even though he was lonely, he was thinking about Timothy's welfare. The Bible is true. The first time I defended myself, no one helped me. Everybody left me. May they be forgiven. He forgave everybody. But the Lord stayed with me and gave me strength so I could tell you fully the good news. Here is the cure for loneliness. Read that passage. Paul gives us a, a pathway to how we can break loneliness and all of it ends up if we can minister. Companionship is great. It has power. Don't let it dominate you. But power of fellowship can help you until you get companionship, which you need. But the bottom line is a friend that sticks closer than a brother, a God who will always love you, is the God you want. Reach out to somebody through a visit, a phone call, a card, a text message. Help them feel connected. So, I need you to take these scriptures, read it, go through, and remember that spirit of loneliness is a dark spirit. It doesn't belong to you. Not when I can fellowship, and not when I can have God, and not when I can do God's work. Everybody have a great day. Remember, um, uh, I have some great news for you. This year, 2021, uh, you're going to be introduced to some other preachers during our Bible study time. We have some fantastic preachers here at Shiloh Baptist Church. Uh, my assistant pastor, Pastor Caleb Brown, is going to be doing a series. My youth pastor is going to do a series. And just look forward to seeing a variety of well-trained, well-studied preachers who are going to bring you the good news. And I'm looking forward, I hope you're looking forward, we're closing out. That's why we left loneliness. We're closing out 20. Let that lonely spirit in there. 2021, we're stepping into fellowship. We're stepping into work. We're stepping into a closer walk with God. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for everyone who was listening tonight. Thank you for everyone who heard the word. Allow them to apply it to their life. And we bind up and curse and break that dark spirit that will come in and try to destroy their lives. In Jesus' name, amen.